What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at AAR headquarters. It's kind of a vlog and an update to the Aston Martin. Boy, I've had a lot of you really in the comment section pushing hard for an update on the Aston Martin. So I promise you, I will tell you what happened to the Aston Martin before this video is over. Currently, it is extremely wet out here today. I need to move the Cadillac Fleetwood into the garage. We are expecting hail um, and possibly tornadoes today as well. I had my landscapers come out and they cleaned up my yard. I mean, it actually looks really good. Everything is mowed. Don't worry, all of that's going to grow back before you know it. That'll all be, all be fresh grass again and it will look relatively good. Um, since it's pouring rain, this would be a great time to check my water heater. I keep telling you guys that uh, we're, we're needing to put a water heater in here, but I don't want to put a $650 water heater in here if it's leaking. Now, I already took the time and I got on the roof and I put on a new cap for that vent. There's the dog. I see you. Now let's go in here and let's take a look at the water heater and see if she's leaking because it is really pouring outside. I hear it, but I don't see. It's a little wet over here, but you can hear the rain. I definitely hear the rain, but I don't see it leaking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe this off. We'll come back and check it before we get out of here today. All right, so we'll let that set for a while and we'll let the rain just continue pouring and uh, hopefully that leak is fixed. I'm going to fire up the Fleetwood because I'm gonna pull this into the garage. I don't want the hail getting to it. It's been sitting here for a while. Oh, there's a bag of parts or something in the back seat that I forgot was in here. Oh, that's for the, that's for the Seville. Oh, she fired right up. Turn that radio down, windshield wiper is on, and let me open the garage door here. I've got an app that actually allows me to open and close my garage door. It's called MyQ. Oh, what is, oh, my windshield wiper is coming off. Uh-oh, I guess I didn't secure that very well. Okay. All right, the door should be opening. Let's get this old girl in the garage. I've got it up for sale, and I sure don't want something happening to it. All right, let's roll up. Man, this thing rides so good. Anyway, if you're interested in the Fleetwood, it's coming up for sale. It's actually already able to be bid on. I think it's bid up to 175 bucks. Um, you know, feel free to go ahead and bid often bid high i think that's what they say i think i'm level here there we go what a boat man this thing's a behemoth there we go Eighty-two thousand miles on the odometer and now we can close that door excuse the flashing lights Ooh, a wasp Sorry, I don't do wasps, man. I'm not big on getting stung. Oh, uh, it's pouring again. Good, good, good. All right. We'll throw the keys up there. Roxy, what are you doing, man? You were in the rain, you poor baby. You poor, oh, she's not happy. Don't come rubbing up on me. Ha <laughs> ha. We got the Seville over here. This thing is still up for sale as well. I really thought this would do well. I've got to buy it now of like 3,200 bucks on it. And I can't believe that it's only, it's only brought 2,200. Sweetheart, right, not right now. Not right now, baby, not right now. I actually watched this dog the other day. We had a big fire out here. We had a massive bonfire. We were burning all of our, uh, all of our old wood. This dog in the middle of the night saw an armadillo she went and grabbed it and killed it. I'm not kidding you. She bit right through the armadillo shell. All you heard was this loud crunch. 
and then she took off running with the armadillo upside down in her mouth. I've never seen a dog eat an armadillo before. That was, that was something. But anyway, the Seville is right here. You guys remember this, Monkey Wrench Mike and I drove it from Indiana back to Oklahoma. 700 plus miles. I think I've got almost 800 miles on this. It's got that beautiful red with the white interior. Yeah, it's only been bringing $2,200. And uh, the doors are locked. This is the only door that's not locked. I'm here to tell you, there's just, there's just no way I'm gonna let this car go for 2,200 bucks. It's not gonna happen. If that means that I, I guess I now own this car, then I guess I own this car um, because I'm not, I'm not gonna sell it for 2,200. Buy it now price is 32, but to be quite honest, if it hit $3,000, I'd let it go. I would let it go. So I'm gonna put a link to this car in the description of this video so you can click on it because it's available to bid and buy right now. Same thing with the old Fleetwood, 96 Fleetwood Brome with the LT1, the Corvette engine. This thing, 82,000 miles. This one's got like 76, 74, 76,000 miles. This one is on there for, I don't know, 59.50 or something like that. Truthfully, I would be happy getting 5,500 out of this and I don't see how this car isn't worth that kind of money. It's in great shape, runs and drives wonderfully. Top was just repainted at the auto spa to match the interior. It's an overall great car. Okay, Roxy, I'm leaving the garage, baby. Oh, you want your belly rubbed? You want your belly rubbed? Oh, you poor baby. I'd let you in the house, but my dog is here and she would not be okay with Roxy. Let's see if we can get out here and not get too wet. You coming? Good girl. Good girl. We got to see what cars we have left. So obviously we've got the Fleetwood Brome. We've got the Seville. And I got one more car to show you. Boy, what are these little bugs? They're like mosquitoes. There's my dog right there. This your friend? Watch. This your friend Roxy? There's Roxy. Yeah, that's Roxy. Yeah, she doesn't, she doesn't like Roxy. Roxy doesn't care about her, though. <laughs> Come on. Come on. She's just going to get angry. Let's get out here. And you know what's great? I'm always worried about getting my feet wet. You guys hear me all the time out at the auction yards, and I'm like, man, my feet are soaking wet. Guess what I did? You're never going to believe this. I got to show you, because these just came in today. By the way, not sponsored. I don't want anybody to think these are sponsored, but Vessies, man. Vessies. You guys remember, you used to see like ads on YouTube videos all the time back in the day for Vessies, the waterproof shoes. Well, I was out here working one day, moving cars around, and it was wet like this, and my feet were soaking wet. My socks were wet. I was pissed. I hate wet feet more than just about anything. And I, as for some reason, I remembered Vessies and I was like, damn, I wish I had some Vessies right now. So I went straight home and I ordered a pair of Vessies for myself and my fiance. They weren't particularly cheap. It's like 135 bucks for this pair of shoes, but I'm able to walk around out here, step in mud holes and stuff and not get my feet wet. It's worth it to me. So the yard is all done. Almost all of the wood, aside from a little bit over here, still needs to be cleaned up. I mean, all of this, you can see the pile. That was all wood. All we got left is this little bit. I'm gonna use that for kindling. And then we're gonna burn all of this and what little bit is left back there. But I built this little fire pit here, man, with the, with the logs around it kind of for seats. You can sit on them. And then I came over here and I dug out this fire pit. It's a lot deeper than it was before. I'm gonna use this dirt as fill dirt for where the tow truck got stuck. And then this will be a nice, deep, recessed fire pit. It's looking good, man. This property is really coming together. The only thing I got left is figure out that damn water heater. So here's the cars we got left. The two caddies that you saw in there and the tow truck. And I'm actually thinking about putting the tow truck up for sale as well. I still need to get reverse fixed on that transmission. I just haven't gotten around to it. I'm so busy with everything else. Okay. Out of all the cars that used to be sitting out here, this whole yard was full. I mean, it was, there were cars everywhere. And all I've got left are three. Everything else is sold. It's already been picked up. I've been paid for it. They're gone. 
Now you're ready to hear about the Aston Martin because that's what you clicked on the video for, right? Look at this, watch. I don't even give a damn. Right in the mud, man. I swear if my feet get wet, I'm sending it back. <laughs> I will send it back. I'm gonna do it again. Normally I avoid this kind of stuff, you know? My feet aren't wet. Again, it's not sponsored. I'm not, I'm not putting a link below the video. I'm not trying to, you know, sell you anything. I'm just saying, if you hate wet feet as much as I do, well, you can find their website. I don't even know how to spell it. V-E-S-S-I. There you go. I got a letter here from Brian. Oh, hell. I hope he's doing all right. All right, let's go in the house. Let's check this water heater. I'm gonna break down what happened with the Aston Martin. Well, I'm back in here looking for leaks and normally it runs right outside here and down onto the floor, which is why I have a towel down there and I don't see anything leaking out of this at all. So we might just be okay. All right, so the Aston Martin, that was a fiasco and I hope to God I never have to deal with something like that again. Uh, it was very stressful. I was very concerned, but I'm happy to say they found the car. So what happened? Well, this is a, a, a bizarre story that I've never experienced before. And I want to make it very clear again, this was not something that Copart did. They, Copart didn't do anything. This tow company was hired by Copart to pick my vehicle up from here and carry it to Copart. That's what they were supposed to do. To the tow company decided not to. This happened on a Friday, which was the worst day of the week it could have happened because Copart is obviously closed Saturday and Sunday. Nothing else can be figured out until Monday. <laughs> well, when you're, when you're talking about an exotic car, the worst starts running through your head, like somebody stole it. What are they doing? Are they joyriding it? I still don't know the answers to that. Um, they could have done whatever they wanted to with that car, and I would have never known. Uh, I had people saying that you know, I should have had a, an air tag in it or a GPS device. You, you are probably right. But I worry that that violates the new owner, the new owner's privacy. You know, I, I just don't know. That's something I would need to discuss with Copart to figure out what I can and can't do because this really does make me want to put a GPS tag on the cars that I'm selling to them. Anyway, the tow truck driver came and he picked up the, the car just like he was supposed to and he took it. The problem is he did not take it to Copart like he was supposed to. He took it to a place called Earlsboro, Oklahoma and left it there. We don't know if he left it on the truck, which I specifically instructed them, do not, it, it rained all weekend. I told them, do not leave that car in the rain. It's got to be put in dry storage. Well, I don't know if that happened or not. I don't know who bought my car. I don't know anything about it. So I can't tell you how it all worked out other than Copart called me and they said, your car is safe, but the towing company decided they are not going to deliver it to Copart until they have six cars in their queue to deliver at the same time. Apparently they didn't want to make a bunch of trips. So they just took everybody's car and kind of held them hostage at their storage facility until they had enough cars to justify taking them all to Copart. I made sure to let Copart know to never pair me with that towing company again. I know the name of it. I know who they are. I'm not gonna put them on blast. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it alone. But I'm just telling you guys what actually happened. They took my car and they stored it over the weekend. It ended up getting delivered Monday. Um, so it was delivered. I've been paid for the car. The customer has the car. The customer is happy. Everybody's good. And that situation is over because truthfully, I really did think the worst. And how am I to know that someone was not out joyriding my Aston Martin for the weekend? That is money that belongs to me and my customer. That's their money. You know, if the customer has a problem, he gets his money back. I don't get my money back if something goes wrong. I already paid for the car. I'm stuck with that car. And it turns into this whole fiasco if something goes wrong and well, anyway, it didn't, 
thankfully. It, everything was figured out. The car is fine. Customer is fine. And I'm fine. Everybody is happy. But again, I want to make it clear this was not Copart's doing. This is a company that they contracted to do the work. And you know how that goes sometimes, you know, uh, the company let everybody down in this situation. Now, real quick, before we get out of here, I had a lot of people saying I should have just hauled these cars myself with a tow truck. Kind of a fair point, but I want you to see my point as well. The tow truck does not have reverse. If I get myself into a situation like I could haul two cars at a time, but if I get into a situation where I have to go backwards... I now have to take the car off the stinger, use the stinger to back up, put the car... It, Copart does not charge that much to haul these cars for me. I had, I don't know how many, seven or eight cars that went to Copart almost all simultaneously. Copart from here is over an hour each way. So you're talking for me to get two cars, if I can make it with two cars on the tow truck... It would take me an hour to get there at a minimum and an hour to get back here to get the next batch. You're talking about eight cars. So you're talking about two hours per two. You're talking, what, eight hours? Eight hours to, haul, to tow these cars? Man, Copart came out here with a bunch of different tow companies, and they just loaded them up. All of them. <laughs> Took them away. Yeah, there was an issue with that one, but, you know, it was resolved. So anyway... That's why I decided not to use a tow truck. It, it, eight hours of my day, that's a lot of time, and I barely have any time to get anything done as it is. So there's your story with the Aston Martin. There's one more thing I want to address before I get out of here, and that is I've had a lot of people telling me that I should probably get my retail dealer's license and stop, have, stop selling these cars through these auctions like this. And I'm here to tell you that I have been fighting doing that for years, and it's super easy for me to get a dealer's license. I mean, honestly, all I got to do is put a sign in my front yard and go pay the tax commission like 200 bucks. I already have a retail location. I just have to put a sign up. That is it. I got to put up a sign, pay a little bit of money, and we would have ourselves a retail dealership where I could sell cars to the public. And even though I'm still not sure I want to do it, I, I'm, I'm thinking this may be something I'm going to go ahead and do. So don't get too excited yet. I am doing some experimenting in the background, and we're going to see if I can work this out. But currently, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to buy new model cars, like 2020, 2021, 2022, kind of on the lower end of things. You know, Hyundais and Kias, they're not super expensive, but they're not cheap cars either. These are cars that would still be under factory warranty. So... I could sell these cars as long as I can get them at the auction at a decent enough price. I could sell them, and I, I would never have to worry about my customer. You know, my customer would get a practically a brand new car that's under warranty. If anything goes wrong, they can take it right back to the dealership, and it can get fixed for free. That makes me feel good. I just hope that there's content in doing this and that you guys are going to follow along and watch. I haven't made any decisions if I'm actually going to go retail yet. But I do want you to know that I am doing some experimenting in the background. I'm trying some things out. And stay tuned because there should be some new cars coming to the channel soon. I'm not only going to do like new cars and, and that, that would be boring. I'll find some other stuff too that could be interesting and fun. But I really would like to turn this wholesale thing that is losing me a ton of money into something profitable. Now remember, before we get out of here, if you're interested in the Seville... Man, throw a bit on that thing or hit the buy it now button on Copart. Link below the video. Same thing with that beautiful Fleetwood Brougham over there. Brand new tires. I mean, brand new a lot of things. I, I put quite a bit into that car. I've got I've got well over $6,500 into that car. Well over, probably around $7,000. But $5,500, I would let it go for $5,500. So... Definitely throw a bid on it or do even better, $59.50 or $59.95. Hit the Buy It Now button. The link for that below the video as well. And if you're interested in a 2022 Harley Davidson Nightster, well, I've got one right here with 40 miles on the odometer, fresh out of the Harley Davidson Service Center for recall work. So there are no rec recalls on it. It runs and rides absolutely fine like it's supposed to. It's never been laid down. I've never dropped it on the floor, nothing like that. It's got zero damage. It's absolutely perfect, albeit a little dirty. This right here, I paid, I think it was like 14, 14, 5. 
I'm telling you, if someone would offer me 11 grand for this, I'll let you have it. 11,000 bucks, you could have basically a brand new Harley. It's still under full factory warranty and all of that good stuff. It's only, I think it's about six or seven months old. If I remember correctly, Harleys have a two year warranty. So if you're interested in that, shoot me an email, auto auction rebuilds, plural, auto auction rebuilds at gmail.com. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.